Hello, hello, it is Claire Berry here and today I'm going to talk with you guys a little bit about the Weston A. Price Foundation and Raw Milk, okay? Now, I know that adults and some people enjoy raw milk, they really like the taste of it, and I'm really, I'm really not against it. I'm not one of those people that thinks that raw milk, you know, should be banned. I'm not a big believer in banning really anything. <laughs> that's another, that's another YouTube topic, I think. But... Um, I do want to talk about this because this is one of my number one issues with them because I am so um, interested in infants health and it just doesn't make sense to me as soon as I heard that Weston A. Price actually promotes the rampant and daily and you know regular use of raw milk not even boiling at first just raw milk for infants no age limit just give it to them straight here you go okay we're gonna talk about this today now if you are somebody who is like out there and you don't know much about Weston A. Price you're already like okay I don't even watch this video because I already know that's like sounds like a ridiculous idea it's unsafe unhealthy and doesn't sound very smart right however the Weston A. Price has this formula for getting intelligent people to believe them so what they do is they go through and they start writing their points and they've got some good points, you know. They've got, they're kind of anti-Monsanto. They're anti, you know, these pesticides and pollution and all of that stuff. They're anti-factory farms, which is great. So when, you know, that's the biggest problem in America, one of the biggest problems with our food supply, you know, it's not hard for people to say, oh, look, these are the good guys. Look, they're up against the giant. You know, they're up against big beef. Like, they've got to be. They're telling people to go to the farms. They've got to be good. So let's just believe everything they say. Like, no. Stop right there. First of all, just because they say that they're against big beef and that they're against factory farming doesn't really mean anything when you actually look at the principles and you take away the little little you know like I, I said in other videos most people who either even if they research it and they follow this or a lot of times what I did I was sort of halfway following Weston A. Price for a while just off of hearsay because I heard you know my chiropractor my my kid's grandpa he was telling us about it and I trusted him he does all the research. I'm just a little punk kid, you know, with a little baby. I'm going to listen to him. And that's what people do. And people like that, they don't make sure they go to the factory, to the, you know, non-factory farms and get that meat. They're going and buying the one that just says, you know, non-factory grass fed or, or they're just, oh, well, we'll get organic next time or something. They just can't afford it this time or whatever. So you can see how it's very easy that even if, um, even if, you know, these people's research is good for small farmers it's also good for meat business in general there's really no distinction when i say i'm in child care i don't say i'm in small child care and that's totally different than any other no i still have the same issues as any teacher i still have the same you know it's still the same thing i'm still in the child care industry and they would like you to think that oh because they're not you know in the big beef industry that they're not in the beef industry they are all of their all of their donors all of their um sponsors i guess is what they call them instead of donors since they actually you know don't list their donors because they give them something, they give them ad space, or they give them a table at this event, or whatever, so, um, because they're actually buying something, they don't have to say they donated anything, and they don't have to list, they, you can't find their list of donors, because supposedly there is none, but that million, those millions of dollars comes from somewhere, and I'm telling you, it comes from the farmers. Of course, the farmers, you know, want you to believe that raw milk is safe. And, you know, farmers have been drinking it for a long time, so I'm sure it's safe, right? Well, let's just think about this. Back before you had pasteurization, you had 25 times the disease and outbreaks. Links on my page, pages, ask me if you can't find it. Um, I don't understand why WAP people think they have such a good grasp on history and, you know, traditionalism when you can't go back, you know, just barely before West Indian Price was even around, you know, and, and see that. And um, 25 times more outbreaks due to dairy. I mean, come on, is that hard to put that together? 
and just because babies don't die from the um, illnesses usually these days because you know if a baby gets sick now off of E. coli or whatever usually they can save the baby they, with our new medical you know practices they can they can save most of the babies so you don't hear about a lot of babies dying anymore like they used to so does that make it okay though just because we have better medicine and you know we can save the babies does that still make it okay to risk your baby's life or to risk your baby's sickness just because you think he's getting a little bit higher of nutrition that way like have you really sought out the alternatives um because there's a lot safer ones than that. I just don't understand why people, and especially the people I've talked to who I've asked them like, okay, well you're obviously feeding your kid raw milk, so you obviously have found some really good resources. Like, please share them with me, you know? Nothing. So that shows me that people are not, even like giving something as controversial as giving raw milk to your baby, you know, you're not gonna really thoroughly research that. Like, are you joking me? Anyway. <laughs> Um, moving on, let's see, raw milk, is it really even good for you? Mother Jones article. Okay, talking about pasteurization, that's why selling milk is illegal, you know, in 18 states, because it can cause severe illness and even death, you know this. Blah, blah, blah. It's still gaining popularity, even though it's illegal, basically, in a lot of places, and they're saying it, it's good for the immune system, but there's no evidence of that. So... Um, it does tend to work for a lot of people, but they, but Western A price people think that it, because it's grass fed that they're just, the chances are like so low of them getting, you know, anything that they're fine. And they believe this. Why? Because that's pretty much what Weston A. Price wants them and tells them to believe. However, if you go and do your own research on this, you will see that People are getting sick off of this all the time and winding up in the hospital. You have the Martin family of Marietta, California in 2006. Um, the pasteurized milk was making their seven-year-old congested, so the mom started buying organic milk. So it was rigorously inspected and it had, you know, had no outbreaks at that time. However, um, all of this about, you know, I've researched it. All of it about, oh, it's, it's an inhabitable environment for these, you know, diseases. It's, it's BS. Trust me, um, I've looked it up and I can share with you my sources if you want. So I will gladly share those with you if you only ask. So basically the kid gets E. coli and his kidneys fail. He's in the hospital for two months. And um, months later, this is, no, years later, he's now 13. They're still not sure if his poor kidneys are even going to hold out, if they're going to work for the rest of his life. Um, if it wasn't for modern medicine, he would have died. Um, and of course, the family files a legal claim against the organic farm. So they disputed out of out of court about the source of the bacteria and all that. So uh, of course, that's not an isolated case. Two hundred and thirty-nine hospitalizations caused by dented tainted dairy products from 93 to 2006, 202 involved raw milk or raw cheese. Now these statistics, Weston A. Price loves to skew, just like they skew pretty much everything. Um, but if you look at it, they try to say that, oh, well look, because only 202 involved milk and cheese, well, it's you can still get sick from it, and your kids sure can. And here's the deal, nearly two thirds of the people who do get sick are under the age of 20. So these parents are like, oh yeah, it's good for the allergies, it's good for this. But kids are more vulnerable, especially young little babies, and they can definitely, definitely, definitely get sick. So um, it's a big risk, and you know, like I said, it's not even, it's not even practical. I I just really don't get it. Sometimes I just want to take Weston A. Price people and like shake them. And especially when they're trying to ban, you know, soy milk, which I'm sorry, but people, a lot of people who give their kids soy, you know, formula and stuff, they're doing it for a reason. That's because their kid is allergic to cow's milk. Okay, they don't have any other alternatives and you're trying to ban it because you don't like it and you don't agree with it. Like go to hell. Seriously, I mean, that's harsh. I don't mean it, but it's 
just hypocritical. You know, if you don't want people to ban your food, don't try to ban other people's food. It doesn't make any sense. So, is that all I have on milk? I guess so. Oh no. Raw milk. Here we go. So before pasteurization, you had 25 more times of illnesses. That just, it says a lot. I know there's a lot going on at that time. Okay, so raw milk, lovers of kids. So the impact of pasteurized milk on public health is nothing short of astounding. Um, in 1885, the infant mortality rate in New York City was 273 per 1,000 live births, more than 27%, okay? Mortality rate, 27%. 1915, mortality rate was 94 per 1,000, a drop of two-thirds. You know what happens between 1885 and 1915? You guessed it widespread pasteurization across America. They did it for a reason, people. And guess what? Back then, I think it's really funny because they weren't feeding a bunch of GMO'd soy and wheat to their cows. So essentially what you have are ding, 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 grass-fed cows, people. So yes, you can get sick and you can die and your baby can die off of raw milk. Okay, yes, our hygiene practices may be a little bit better, but that's not all of it, or I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have even found the need for pasteurization, and it wouldn't be such a big deal. So um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Weston A. Price tends to just easily, just with a flip of a wrist or wand, you know, magic wand, just like debunk all of common knowledge, you know, all of common sense and all of, you know, and I'm not a big, huge fan of, you know, what mainstream, you know, health says to do. However, you can't just make these crazy, crazy, crazy claims with no links, no backup and expect people to believe them. It's just crazy. Okay. So this wraps it up on milk. I do believe Stay tuned for more rants on the Weston A. Price Foundation.